very much. I think I, it's just because I like to eat. That's probably why I'm so interested in food. Um, but I, I just like to start off uh, with my microprint slides. Um, that's what happens with the whole Mac PC connection thing, yeah. Uh, but in short, I work for Cocoa Hawaii Foundation, and these programs that, if you can read, uh, or go to our website, CocoaHawaiiFoundation.org, are really created to instigate innovation. Because that's kind of what we're talking about today. That the mini grants that we provide, or even I'm in schools, the program I work for, is all created to really help assist our schools, especially our DOE schools, to be in, as innovative as possible and give them the tools to do that. Um, so tonight, we can go to the next slide. We need like a buzzer so we can, no, no, no. Um, and keep going. And uh, just really cute pictures of kids, that's why they're, they're there. There we go. And so I in schools connects children to the water, land, and food. That's the program that I work with of Hawaii in hopes to create a, a community and a healthy community And then we're going to get to some specifics of thinking maybe even in the box of how to get more access through our schools. We can continue on. Next slide. That's just a slide of who we are. Um, there we go. Uh -oh. Well, actually, hopefully a picture will show up of a track farm. Windward Nazarene is actually a program of our sister, um, of a sister, I guess so, Jenna and Kendra read it, but Grow Hawaii. They're a Hawaii Associ Association of Independent Schools Farm to School program. And Woodward Nazarene is doing a, or did a truck farm, which will be presented at uh, Children and Youth Day on the 2nd, uh, kind of around the capital and Honolulu Hale area. And it's a novel way to get more access to different communities. Um, it's literally a truck farm. Um, it's a little different than in the picture. This is a picture from the video. But they actually have. In, in the Windward Nazarene, just growing beds, place them in a, in a truck that they can drive almost anywhere. The principal donated your truck to the school, and you can get literally fresh cut greens anywhere in the island. And I think my slides got mixed up, but in short, this is kind of a slide that just really represents where we're at in just. Everybody knows the song Old MacDonald, and everybody knows that he ate a great breakfast of eggs, Portuguese sausage, rice, um, and, and yet many of our kids don't make that connection of where it's from. So go ahead and continue. Um, you can actually fast forward to you get a slide about Salomars. Um, so the first thing I really want to mention is Salomars in schools, and hopefully we'll get there and get some really good pictures along the way. But um, salad bars in schools is a great way for access. Um, kind of as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, changing children's palates are, are essential. And we find that, I thought coming in that kindergarten was the age group, right? That we can really get kids to, to, to know and, and eat different foods at kindergarten. I'm finding maybe even preschool is a better age to start, getting snack programs and things like salad bars in schools. Salad bars in schools, oh, I sent you the whole totally different um, that's all good. Uh, but salad bars in schools presents an opportunity for students to, to try an experiment. It's kind of a living laboratory that they might like carrots one day and, and celery the next, but then we can highly encourage them to try a local beet. Or crazy it is, even try a radish one day and, and attempt those kinds of things. So, so that's really the goal in, in having salad bars in schools. The Lieutenant Governor actually is forming a, a group, um, multi-departments, and, and soon even just the general community to, to really figure out how can we do this. A buck 40 is really rough to work with in the DOE. Um, that doesn't stretch very far. You try to make a meal for a buck 40. Um, and do that for now 100,000 people across, uh, across the state. It, it's, a, it's a big challenge. Um, and so the, the next, um, we'll just totally go off of this. Um, the, the next thing that we want to do is, is also farmers markets. Uh, one big program we, we have in Ident schools is our garden education curriculum. And in garden education, I can just sing and dance instead, um, so, so don't, no worries. Um, in garden education, we, we get kids to rebuild that heart connection to good, clean, wholesome food again. And that's really the goal, right? We, we, we tend to get an, an, an affinity to the, the clown or maybe the little toy that comes in meals. 
But instead, if we can now build that heart connection to the tomato plant, and you probably see somewhere along the slides um, a picture of my daughter, just because I have to have one in there in every single slide. Uh, but she's standing next to a tomato plant. And, and that's symbolic, because that was, she loves tomatoes, because that's what she got to pick at her Vimas farm every day that, that she was babysat. Um, and, and so that heart connection that can be built through salad bars, then it translates to a business plan to create more access to the general community through farmers markets. Because how many of you pass by a school at least three times a week? If you could show of hands. Uh, or any educational facility, I should say. It might be a university or school. Most of us do at least three times a week. Now imagine if each school in every community had kind of a mini farmer's market that would then sell goods either grown on campus, maybe gleaned from the community, at a very decent price to make it accessible to the families. So that's the other thing. And it's all wrapped in a package that says, well, education. Because having a kid come up with a business plan to figure out how much you should price a tomato or price uh, an eggplant or the kale is a great is, is, is a great way to wrap it back, um, some career, uh, future career education, some social studies, uh, great stats or early stats work. Um, so, so it's a great way to, to do that. Um, and along with that is a few of our schools have actually started CSA programs, so Community Supported Agriculture. I guess it would be a CSSA, Community Supported School Agriculture Venture. Um, and, and that's what we encourage our, some of our schools to do. If they don't want to do a farmer's market where they actually set up their wares, it's to do pre-orders when they're ready to harvest. It might be just a bunch, you might just do a basil CSA for, for one part of the year. But it's a great way to, to get students involved in, in really pushing forward more access to, to school food. SNAP program is the third way. Um, we, we found through a generous grant through Kaiser last year, um, kids actually do like fruits and vegetables. Um, it's just kind of how it's presented to them. To them. We created an, an, sheet, an, an education sheet that, students, that uh, students or teachers could read to their classrooms um, call it marketing on one end, um, but really it's education. Where it comes from, some cool facts, like um, tomatoes called the wolf peach, stuff like that, uh, just weird things. In fact, the, the governor came one day to do our banana lesson, and I've got to share about, uh, talk about bananas at one of our schools. And kids absolutely loved it. Bananas, I know, is an easy sale, but try tomatoes, and pretty amazing, um, the response that we got, we did a pre and post test and pre-test, kids said we don't like tomatoes. Post-test, majority of them said they love it. There's quite a few also on the post-test that, that did say we're never going to eat tomatoes no matter what. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Because my mom made a good point, I think, when I was young. She said, be careful who you hang around. And because you're going to become like them, right? So if I hang around with the the Guys like Mark Nobuchi, where is he? No, 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 no. If I, if I hang around, well, whoever I hang around with, I'm going to be more like. And same thing with the food. The food you hang around, you will become like. Um, and so the more we put them around the kids, the more we'll start changing their palates. If we can offer them good, wholesome food again, then they'll, they'll keep these life lessons long term. Um, You know, I, uh, whenever I do these talks, I always get a question, so please don't start out with this question. Or maybe not, not this question, but it always has a negative connotation of, you know, school food is the problem because dot, dot, dot. And I've come to realize in two years of doing this that it's really not the problem. I mean, it's really a symptom of a larger food system issue, right? But, but we blame it because, number one, we figure we fund it because I pay taxes, and taxes then fund the, the school food. So I have a right to say something. But in, as we look at the big, hairy, audacious ideas of, of starting and, and moving in a poi food revolution, it's a paradigm shift. And it starts maybe with our thought for school food. It's a tremendous opportunity, not the problem. There's 180 school days. There's about 180,000 students in public school, another another uh, couple thousand, or actually quite a few couple thousands, in private school. <coughs> students making up a little over 10% of our population. 
that's a tremendous opportunity. Number one, a tremendous market for farmers, I think, if we can get that price point there, and if we can get maybe some mental changes of institutions as a possible market for schools. Um, but, but also, uh, starting with students in, in looking at food marketing, um, looking at ways that students can drive the change. So that's why I really appreciate working with the foundation, um, and, and because it all starts with student-driven change. Um, as Kanu works to inspire and change us, and really works with our adults, we start with kindergartners and just ask some pretty interesting questions of, so where does your carrot come from? And uh, if you look at Woodward Nazarene, or Grove Hawaii's website, great video of Woodward Nazarene, you know, they showed clips of it on this morning's news, and um, they asked where peaches and some other mainland foods come from. But the answers were, peaches come from bushes, and, um, or peaches come from some really crazy stuff, like the store. Uh, and we hope that, that really together we can, we can enact change, that we can connect kids to get back to the land, waters, and food, to create a healthier and thriving, in, to steal Kaiser's word for, for a bit, but, but not only to sustain ourselves, but to create a thriving community again. Um, thank you very much, and I think I just made it time for the red sign. But thank you very much. <laughs>